Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how you can earn passive income from liquidity mining in decentralized finance. Let's hop right in. Now on the channel, we've previously spoke about how you can make passive income from yield farming in decentralized finance. And we've also talked a little bit about staking within decentralized finance. Today, we are gonna be focusing on liquidity mining and what exactly that is and how to earn the passive income off of it. So the process of liquidity mining is essentially putting assets in a smart contract that is known as a liquidity pool. And by providing liquidity liquidity for that smart contract or that liquidity pool, people are able to execute trades. So one of those examples could be Orca Finance. People are able to buy USDC with Sol, which basically means that they are selling their Sol, or they can go and sell USDC for Sol, basically, which basically means that they are buying Sol. They're able to execute these trades between different assets, essentially, and by providing liquidity for those different assets, we're allowing those trades to go through and we're collecting a fee that these traders are paying. Now, a lot of the times that fee is not a lot of money. That fee is typically like 0.3% or something along those lines. However, as you can see, I have a variety of different liquidity pools right here. And over the past couple of weeks, I've earned roughly $2,000 just off of a $40,000 investment into these liquidity pools, which means that this is a very, very lucrative strategy considering some of these decentralized exchanges that we're gonna be providing liquidity for or liquidity mining on have absolutely absurd volume. As you can see, Orca currently has 630 30 million dollars in 24 hour volume yet its liquidity amount is only roughly 320 million dollars so there is a complete lack of liquidity in the decentralized finance space so we're doing a good for the community by allowing trades to be executed without huge price slippage but at the same exact time we're doing a good for ourselves by earning passive income on the assets that we're already holding in our wallet there are two different types of liquidity mining number one is just normal liquidity mining or what we now call full range liquidity providing the other one is concentrated liquidity providing. Essentially, concentrated liquidity gives us leverage in our liquidity pools without having to take on additional market risk. We're only taking on higher fees, but also higher and permanent loss in a proportional manner. So if we were to go provide liquidity on this Uniswap V2 pair for USDC to Ethereum, as you can see, there's been roughly $17,900 in overall fees collected in the past 24 hours. That is not too bad whatsoever. That nearly $18,000 is distributed across $90 million in liquidity. So that basically means if you were to invest a thousand bucks into a liquidity pool well every single year you're making about seventy three dollars off of that thousand bucks which is not a bad return but it's also not a good return because that's roughly seven point three percent per year now typically in the stock market you don't see dividends that high because you also have asset appreciation that's factored in into these liquidity pools that means not only are you earning these fees which is kind of like dividends but you're also earning the asset appreciation just as if you're to hold a growth stock but there's a way to get that return upwards near 50 to 100 percent per year. I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator buildermetrics.com and full disclaimer, this is our own in-house tool and you guys can use this for completely free. We can calculate that exact same pool over on Uniswap V3. It is Ethereum to USDC and we can calculate what type of return we're actually going to get for providing liquidity for this Ethereum to USDC liquidity pool, but with a range and concentrating our liquidity as opposed to just going with normal liquidity and earning only $72 per year. Off the bat, you can see if we use a minus 25 plus 25% range, we are getting a 48% APR, which means off a $1,000 investment, we're making nearly $500 per year, which is way better. And if we were to go ahead and do a tighter range on our liquidity, considering that this past 30 days worth of data is all encapsulated, and this range is actually kind of broad, considering the market has not been moving as much, you could see that we're getting a much higher return. So if we were to concentrate our liquidity just like this, we're getting roughly 83% APR per year, which is even better. And these returns just go up and up and up depending on which assets that you invest into. So to recap, the smaller the range that you have on your concentrated liquidity pools, the higher the return that you are gonna get. Whereas the broader the range that you have on your concentrated liquidity pools, the lower the return that you are going to get. Now you can identify different concentrated liquidity pools over on buildermetrics.com under the discover tab. Now one thing I will say is I would focus on looking at stuff that does not have a stable coin in it. And the reason why is because we are in a bull market. Right now we're currently seeing a bit of a retracement in the market and the market's a little bit stagnant because it's cooling off. But at the same exact time when you zoom out, you look at the past 90 days, we are most definitely in a bull market. 
So I would prefer to be investing into stuff like wrap Bitcoin to Ethereum as opposed to USDC and Ethereum and then also another wrap Bitcoin to USDC pair. And the reason why is because whenever you're investing into something that has a stable coin in it, as the price of Ethereum is going up, that means that you are being sold into USDC because you are giving your Ethereum away to people that are giving you USDC. Because remember, you're facilitating trades, which means that you're taking on the counterparty risk to the trade. So if somebody is trading, let's just say USDC for Ethereum, that USDC is coming into the liquidity pool, going to you, and that Ethereum is coming out of the liquidity pool, going to the person that's executing the trade that actually wants the Ethereum. So by being in something like wrap Bitcoin to Ethereum, if you lose exposure, you're just being converted into another asset that is also rising in the market, not a stable coin. Whereas if you're in something like Ethereum to USDC, the worst part is you're being sold into a stablecoin that's not moving. So the kind of difference here and the reason why I prefer like wrap Bitcoin ETH over, you know, ETH USDC or wrap Bitcoin USDC is because worst case scenario, I'm in Bitcoin. Best case scenario, I'm in Ethereum. So either way, it's a win-win situation in my personal opinion. But what I will say is the returns on these liquidity pools are going to be a lot lower than returns on stuff paired with USDC. And that's because people that are in those USDC pools don't want to take on the counterparty risk. And that's because people have the same exact mindset. They don't don't want to be invested into those USDC pools because they're going to lose exposure to Ethereum as the market is rising. Whereas in this wrap Bitcoin Ethereum pool, we could take a little bit lower of a return and get roughly 30% per year. But at the same exact time, at least we have full market exposure. That means if both these assets rise 10%, we're rising 10% as opposed to if Ethereum were to rise 10%, maybe you make 5% in the Ethereum to USDC liquidity pool. But all of these pools can be identified over on buildermetrics.com under the discover page. You can browse across Uniswap, PancakeSwap, SushiSwap, swap as well as Orca. The only thing I am going to mention about Orca is they do have a lot higher returns than what you get on any of these other exchanges. That's because the Solana network has been blowing up recently. However, since it did cost us a lot of money to implement Orca, it is a part of our pro plan. Now our pro plan is $35 per month or $350 for one year's access, which basically means that you get two months free. However, what we are doing since we just launched our pro plan is we are giving out a discount code. The discount code is simply launch. Type that in at checkout and you will get 25% off your first purchase. So if you go ahead and proceed with the $35 a month plan, your first month will be 26 bucks and then your next month will continue and renew at 35 bucks. Whereas if you just go with the yearly plan, you're gonna get a full year's worth for roughly $260. But I don't wanna focus too much on that. I wanna tell you what exactly I'm looking for in a liquidity pool as well as how exactly I choose the ranges and get invested into those liquidity pools for the concentrated liquidity mining. So the first thing is I always start on the Discover page on Builder Metrics. I already broke down a little bit about what this Discover page is, but the overall goal is for you to find some concentrated liquidity pools. And since we are scraping a ton of data, it does take a little bit to load, but once it does load, you'll be meted with a ton of different concentrated liquidity pools. Now, unless you're deploying over $25,000, I would not recommend being on the Ethereum network for the main reason of that the gas fees on the Ethereum network cost a lot of money. So we're gonna head over to the Polygon network. The reason why we're on the Polygon network is because the Polygon network has transaction fees of just a couple pennies. And I'm gonna stick under the top Uniswap V3 pools section and it's gonna show me the top pools. Now, instead of sorting by estimated fees in the past 24 hours or anything like that, I'm going to sort by the fees divided by TVL ratio. Basically, this is dividing the amount of fees by the overall TVL. And the higher the number, the better, because that means that there is more fees in proportion to the overall TVL of the liquidity pool. Now, off the bat, we'll have some stuff like Naka Matic. We'll have some stuff like Matic Demo, like Matic PYR. I've already looked into these different pools. The first one I'm going to look at is this Render to ETH liquidity pool on the Polygon network. The reason why I'm looking at this is because, number one, it's an asset that I already hold in my wallet, an asset that I actually want to provide liquidity for, as opposed to just some random asset. And then from here, you can also see that we have a relatively good TVL, about a million bucks. My base TVL is always above $500,000. I will not deploy capital into something that has below $500,000 for two reasons. Number one, I don't want to dilute the pool's return and actually get a lower return than what I was expecting. But number two, I also don't want to be into something that is not completely liquid and that I can't easily get out of. Now, looking at this Ethereum to render chart, you could see that the price is very, very stable. So with that being said, we could go with the relatively tight range right now. And what I mean by the tight range is instead of being broad like this and getting a lower return, we just go ahead and get super narrow on this range and make sure that we're capturing this data because ETH as well as render token are moving very, very closely together. That means if render goes up 10%, ETH might be going up 10%. Same thing vice versa if they were going down or if one was going up before.
for the other. The point is these assets are very, very correlated and they are moving together. Now, when I'm choosing my range, I'm really looking at asset ratio. I personally think that render is going to perform better in the long term. So I want to start with more render in my liquidity pool. So by adjusting this range, you can see that it goes from having 68% all the way over to 33%. So I'm probably going to want to have about 60% render in this liquidity pool. I'll probably put my top range right here at about 410, mainly because I like to have somewhat of a broad range, but at the same exact time, I don't want to have it too broad to the point where I'm barely getting any yield. And then from there, that gives me 50-50. I can adjust this min price until I get to about 60% render, and there I am getting 160% per year. I am pretty happy with that. A little bit of word of advice for me, don't focus on the yield, focus on the strategy that makes you comfortable, that you are capable of managing and spending the time to manage, because this pool right here, I'm probably gonna spend an extra hour per week just managing this pool, making sure that this pool is solid, making sure that it's in range, that my asset ratio is still looking you know, like I want it to look basically, where I have the 60% render, 40% ETH, and also just making sure that this position is the best position out there. So by adding each position like this, I'm adding about an hour per week to my management. And that's with a range of minus 30 to plus 26. If I'm doing like minus 15 plus, let's just say 13, I'm probably actually adding three hours per week to my management flow in the portfolio. But the other thing I want to look at is the estimated fees because it shows 160%, but personally, I'm not too confident that we actually are going to get 160%. If we move this current price to the top of the liquidity distribution where there is a peak right here, you can see we're actually getting 130%. That's because there's less liquidity over here as there is on this top price. So we have to assume that we're going to get this return and they'd be shocked when we get a higher return basically. And that's because if the price does revert right over here where the most liquidity is, we are actually going to get 130% per year. And then going down, I'm going to want to look at the volume history chart. You can see there was a ton of volume over here and then volume just kind of got cut off over here and it's been relatively low ever since March 21st. So I'm going to want to look at data since March 21st, it's currently the 30th. So I'm going to go ahead and use a calculation range of nine days. And as you can see, I'm getting roughly 40% per year, including this liquidity distribution as well as correlation chart. So we went from getting 160 to 130 to now 40%. Now what I will say is that volume does pick up then we will get higher than 40% per year. But we have to assume worst case scenario right now is getting 40% per year. And if we're happy with that, let's go get invested. Let's hit create position and then actually open up the position. Whereas if we're not happy with that, then we should start to look for different liquidity pools. Now looking over at Orca, I personally think they have better returns on render to soul, not render to ETH, but still soul and render are very similar to ETH and render. They are very, very closely correlated. And that's because the fee to TVL ratio is really, really good and way better than what it is on Uniswap. So I would consider looking at that pool over on Orca. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe when notifications turned on. I am going to leave a link to Builder Metrics down below in the description. Remember, it's completely free unless you want to use Orca. Then that's where the pro plan comes into play. The code is launch and that's going to get you 25% off your first purchase. I'll see you guys in the next video and peace out.